Hello you. Going about myself. 10 kilos of carrots because I love them. They're cheap to buy in bulk and I just love carrot wine. So guess what we're making today? Oh yes, sit them and join me. Carrot wine is one of those classic country wines that if you haven't made, you're missing out on a treat. It's sweet, flavoursome, full-bodied, very rich, very brandy-like, and it's all brilliant. Oh, I love it. By the way, Carrot Wine was the first ever YouTube review video I made. Back in the days when I didn't have a beard. This Carrot Wine here is a 2013 one I made a few years back. Delicious. I would well recommend making it. So if you want to check it out, it's up above. Right then, first one I need is your carrots. About two kilos of them, all sliced and diced up. The thinner, the better. They release more flavour if you cut them thinly. Come on. Some, some people think you should peel your carrots before you chop them because you don't want any peel going into the wine. They say it gives it a bit of a bitter taste. I've never found that when I've made this wine. So personally, I don't bother peeling them. I think it's a waste to remove all the nutritious nutrients that are under the skin. So I never peel any of my veg. Potatoes, never. Carrots, no. Apples, definitely not. Apart from grapes, I like my grapes peeled and fed to me with a gin and tonic in my hand. One of the great things about this recipe is once you've boiled up your carrots, you can mash them and have them for your tea. So therefore, the wine is pretty much a byproduct of your meal. Okay, healthy eating and good drinking, all in one. Fantastic. So that's my two kilos of carrots there, already chopped up. All we need to do now is prepare the boiling water. So kettle on, saucepan, and let's do it. Fantastic. And simply pour over boiling water over your carrots. I'm using just under one gallon's worth, so about four litres, because I want to add the sugar after I've boiled up. I don't want sweet carrots, I don't. So pour over four litres, four and a half litres of boiling water. Awesome. You want to bring your carrots up to a boil and then turn them down and let them simmer for about 15, 20 minutes. You want all that lovely flavour, nutrition and juice to come from the carrots into the boiling water. So bring it to the boil. Throw it all in, boil it up and hey, you have carrot wine, 10 pence a bottle, you can't beat that. So go and have a cup of tea or a glass of wine in the meantime. And I'll be right back when this has boiled up. Whilst your carrots are boiling up, you want to prepare the rest of the ingredients you need to make this lovely wine. I'm adding a kilo and a half of granulated sugar. So I'm going to weigh that up now. A kilo and a half also, it doesn't really matter too much. A bit over, a bit under. You can do the dippy dabby dobby with the hydrometer to make sure it's going to be strong enough for your liking. If you want a sweet wine, add slightly more sugar. If I get dry, add a kilo and a half. It's your recipe, your wine, your choice. Only you know what your preferences are. Very, very sweet, add more. Or on the drier side, add a bit less. It's your choice entirely. But I think a kilo and a half isn't a bad benchmark for this particular carrot wine. Medium dry. Awesome. So come on, let's get weighing. Once you've weighed up your sugar, your kilo and a half, you want to throw it into your primary fermentation vessel. Don't we? That's a big plastic bin. You do. Pardon? So you want to throw it, your sugar, 
into your primary fermentation vessel and then strain off, that's right, strain off all the carrot juice on top of it and give it a really good stir. Hey. Just put your sugar in. Pretty basic. Just pour your sugar straight in your bucket. And then the fun bit begins where you can pour over all of your carrot juice on top of the sugar. Give it a really good stir. Fantastic. I'm going to be eating the carrots for tea for dinner tonight. Can't grow or buy enough of them. Awesome stuff. The colour of your carrot juice is just divine. Goldeny carroty. You can tell it's going to be good. Oh yes. So I want to pour this now over the sugar, give it a really good stir and get the sugar all dissolved up. Fantastic. Come on then. I am also throwing in one tea bag of normal black tea into the bucket to help regulate and add more tannin to the wine. Really does help with the finished bottle it does. One tea bag, shove it in. And also, I like to add one banana. Peel it, chunk it, throw it in, and also add the skin as well. Someone asked the other day if you can taste the banana come through in wines. One banana, you won't really notice much of the banana flavour. It's only if you add no, I don't know, a whole kilo or so when it becomes banana-ish. But one banana helps add the body and give it a bit more substance on your tongue and around your cheeks. That yum, yeah, that type of flavour. So that's why I add banana. Last thing you want to add, whilst you give it a final leather stir, is a decent squirt of lemon juice. Or lime juice if you have limes, but either or either. You, now you could add citric acid if you don't have lemon juice. However, it's more expensive than lemons and it's just the same thing. And I'd rather keep my wines as natural as I can. There's less amount of chemically manipulated additives I add, the better. What's wrong with lemon juice? So put a decent squirt in and give it one final stir. And that is pretty much it. You want to set this aside for three or four days in a nice warm place with a lid on it or a tea towel. Stir it daily, let all the air and oxygen go in and help it really ferment. Before you do that, you want to add yeast and yeast nutrients. So I'm going to wait until it cools, add some yeast and yeast nutrients. My carrot wine has been allowed to cool till room temperature, so I'm now going to pitch in the yeast and the yeast nutrients. I'm using my standard El Cheapo nutrients and yeast. These are my standbys, they make good wine, they're not the best if you want specific qualities coming through into your wine, but they do the job. They turn liquid into wine. They ferment, and that's the main thing. And the nutrients really helps give it a good kickstart. I like the big tubs, they last an age. I put them in the fridge and they will keep on staying there forever. Anyway, there's a link to them down below in the description. Just add in a decent sprinkle, about a tablespoon or so. And same with the yeast. I'm going to put this in a warm place for a few days, stir it daily, then in a few days time I'll put it into demijohns. Fantastic. See you soon. Hello. A few days have passed they have and I've transferred the carrot wine from the primary vessel into its demijohn. And I have to say it's bubbling away really well. There's a small layer of froth and foam coming up from the yeast on the very top layer of the demijohn near the neck. It's looking awesome, I have to say. Bubbling well, 
smelling awesome, looking brilliant it is. Once it clears out, it's gonna be a wonderful dark white. So I'll do a taste test with this carrot wine when it's ready. So why don't you subscribe and stay tuned for all the updates about all my wines. See you soon now.